Hello YouTube, my name is Shadow. I am a Reaper 1 trick in Overwatch 2 and the patch notes are finally here. I'm pretty sure these are the patch notes that were leaked a week or two ago and uh, it's going to be really interesting for Season 9. So being a Reaper main, I'm going to look at these from the perspective of playing Reaper, both with how I will interact with the enemies that are changed and with my own teammates, how those are going to be changed. Um, because I'm a one trick and that's how I look at things. <laughs> so let's get into it. Now, I do play other heroes, but it's just really rare that I ever swap. From KD Community Manager, Overwatch 2 Retail Patch Notes, February 13th, 2024. Go live at 11 a.m. Pacific Time tomorrow, which is the 13th. So, nice. All right. Welcome to Season 9 Champions. Brings core gameplay updates, reworked comp game mode, new co-op event that will test the current... Okay. I'm going to kind of skim through a lot of the text here. New event, Christ, Cosmic Crisis, face off against Eldritch Abominations in Cosmic Crisis, brand new co-op mission, work with three other players to repair your ship and escape Antarctica while fighting off monstrous Null Sector. Interesting. Keep an eye out for your teammates. Uh, it's going to be Moira. We already saw in the trailer, Moira is going to be evil. <laughs> More evil than usual. She's already pretty evil. Comp play updates. Developer comments with your feedback. We made new improvements to competitive play that aim to improve more transparency, provide more transparency in your progress after each match. Introduce new skill tier, new competitive rewards. Skill rank reset. Given the significant changes to our heroes and the addition of a new skill tier, this reset is designed to give all players a chance to climb higher than ever before. They should have done this at the launch of Overwatch 2, but whatever. All roles in role queue and open queue in competitive play have been reset to unranked. Uh, yeah. What I saw some rumors going around is that you would drop a few skill tiers, is what basically people were saying. Where, like, if you were GM, you dropped to Diamond. Or if you were, like, Silver, you dropped to Bronze. Or people were saying that everybody was going to be pushed into Gold to Diamond as the average, because it's the middle. So... I'm glad that it's not that. Everyone is just going to be unranked. So when you actually do your placement matches, you're going to be apparently queued with everybody. Like, if you were a GM, you are you have literally no rank now. No MMR, it seems. I hope it's like that, because uh, that'll be chaotic for a bit, but I think that's the best way to do the true reset. So for your placement, you're going to, you know, <laughs> maybe fight a bronze or someone who used to be a bronze for a game. And it might be a stomp, but that's like part of the reset. Placements have been rebuilt from the ground up. Your predicted rank will be displayed after each placement match. You must complete 10 matches in a roll to receive your skill rank. So it's just the prediction, so you can like keep track of where you're going to be, which it depends on how accurate the predictions are, whether or not that kind of ruins the whole placement thing, but I think it's good to always know what you're going to probably be. Winning your placements will have a significant impact on your final rank. They don't mention losing, which is kind of weird, but okay. Comp updates have been reworked. Instead of requiring 5 wins or 15 losses, it will now happen after every match. Good. Good. I like that. I don't know how this will work with, um, like, group gaps, where I don't remember the exact numbers, but it's like someone in GM can't play with someone in gold, for example. So that might make it a little tricky, but if you're that far apart in skill, I mean, it's kind of whatever. Going forward, the comp update page now hosts information about your ranks in roll queue and open queue as well as your progress. Cool. Oh, as well as your progress towards point rewards. That's nice. Skill modifiers now appear on the competitive progress page after each match. Skill modifiers provide information how much a rank will gain or lose after a match, including win or loss streaks, rank instability, and match favorability. New skill tier, champion. A new rank has been added above GM called champion. It is more exclusive than any other rank in Overwatch, only... An exceedingly small percentage of players will ever occupy this echelon, echelon <laughs> of competitive play. I think it's interesting that it's above because I don't know how much people truly hit the ceiling of high GM. Uh, I mean, top 500 is technically moving upwards. But I feel like, I don't know, it's, it's going to be interesting. We'll just have to see how many people. Them saying that it's super difficult to get... Uh, just doesn't make sense. Like, will it be possible for the beginning that people will be top 500, but the highest is going to be GM instead of champion? Like, that that's kind of... Like, will champion... Or, sorry, will top 500 not be champion one always? That's going to be interesting to start off with, I think. Uh, judging by with how people climb. The range of ranks for players in a competitive play is now displayed on the same screen where both teams are shown their name cards. 
the range of ranks. That's interesting. I like that a lot. More transparency there with what people rank are. New grouping requirements. Okay, this is what I was wondering about since you're going to get updated every match. Bronze through Diamond may play with each other within two skill tiers of their own rank. May group with other players within two skill tiers. Does the two skill tiers mean... Like, if you're Diamond 1, you can play with Masters 5 and 4? Is that what it is, I think? I might be getting that backwards. Masters players may group with other players within one skill tier of their own skill rank. Interesting. GM may group with players within three <laughs> skill divisions of their own rank. Champion players may group with only one other player within three skill divisions of their own skill rank. That's interesting. All right. I'm not a GM. I'm not a high rank. I'm not going to pretend that I am. Uh, I don't play comp that much because I'm a one trick. But I have seen a lot of GM streamers complain about not being able to group with their friends. So you can in GM, but not in champion, which is interesting. Art and UI updates. Skill tier. Okay, yeah. it's They changed the logos, basically. Competitive points. Each win grants 10. Each draw grants 5. Each loss grants 0. I don't remember what it was before, but that's cool. Comp progression. Competitive challenges that award additional points at the end of the season have been replaced with a new progression system. Uh, so, you know, like, if you ended plat, you get 800 points or something. Now it's different. Every match grants progress towards your competitive progression meter. And after earning 30, you receive an additional 100 competitive points. Wins award 3 progress towards your competitive progression meter. Draws and losses award 1 progress. Interesting. Comp rewards, Jade Weapon Variants. Each Jade Weapon Variant costs 3,000 comp points, same with the gold ones, but things are different. All players will start this season with a balance of zero. All existing ones have been converted to Legacy points. Each Gold Weapon Variant now costs 3,000 Legacy points instead. At the end of a comp year, any remaining points will be converted to Legacy. So that makes it seem like gold you can buy forever, but you only get the credits to buy it at the end of a year. Jade and probably moving forward, is going to be just yearly. So, like, you have one year to get Jade Weapon skins. Hope Maybe, at least for now. Maybe in the future, they'll turn the Jade Weapons into Legacy Points, which I hope they do. I don't like the idea of so much FOMO in the game, but that's how it is for now, I guess. We'll see. Matchmake Rating. It started the season only which is like the chaos which is about to happen in comp. The internal matchmaking rating for all players have been adjusted to push players closer to the normalized. Oh, it is going to be just like this. That's a bad idea, I think. Okay. So, yeah, it's like, oh, we're going to reset everyone to unranked. Not really. You're going to be gold three, which that just seems like a terrible idea. Like, <laughs> yeah, ten placements can get you pretty far if you win a lot, but the average middle from like high silver to low diamond is just going to be even more chaos for the next few weeks because of that. Like just fully reset the rank. I really don't like that. They're pushing it to the average, push it to zero. Max making ratings have been decayed. The higher the rank, the more it has been decayed. Most players will start a lower skill rank division. than the most recent. Rank. <sighs> Dude, just, just make it zero like don't do all this nonsense honestly just give a full proper reset this isn't a full reset this is just like pushing everyone towards gold that is really bad idea i think competitive challenges removed rewards and progress well not okay wait now general updates player progression new sets of visuals progression level badge st upgrades start at level 2500 oh my gosh Wrecking Ball, ti Wrecking Ball. Title rewards are renamed from Champion to Champ to align with Junker Queen's use. Okay, that's funny. Adjusted amount needed to level up certain sub badges for Mog and Alari. Okay. Friend endorsements are only eligible if you're in the match for a set duration. Endorsements are subject to the configured cooldown period of 12 hours. Endorsements are subject to cooldown even if you unfriend the recipient. Okay. So you can't just spam it on your friends. Uh, so a feature for controller keyboard users uh, remembers what you had focus when backing it wait that remembers what you had focus when backing out of screens what does that mean i have no idea crosshair update new reticle types have been added we got square we got box which squares are boxes we got line we got tri-wing and fall off i think fall off is going to be interesting 
New reticle dots have been added. We got ring, square, triangle, cross, heart. <laughs> New reticle color options have been added. Brown, dark red, light red, light purple, gray, and teal. Nice. I always used light green, uh, which I think is... I don't remember what the default is. It's been so long since I had that. Hero updates. Here we go. Uh, now these are the things that we like pretty much know are coming because I saw the leaked ones, so let's get into it. Developer comments, Season 9 features changes to the fundamentals of Overwatch 2 gameplay that affect every hero. We've heard the community feedback around some gameplay pain points, and these changes are in response to many of those. Most damage dealing projectile sizes have been increased by a new global modifier added to their base size. This means every hit scan, every projectile, pretty much every primary damage is bigger. Reaper's shotguns are bigger. Soldier's rifle is bigger to aim with. Hit scan is no longer teeny tiny. So, alright. Uh, plus 0 0.05 meters. Sorry. 0 0.05 meters for hit scan projectiles with a high rate of fire or spread like Tracer and Reaper. Uh, you can debate if Reaper's rate of fire is high, but 20 pellets per shot, I guess. Or spread. Oh, that's what it is. High spread. Okay. 0 0.08 meters for... Plus 0 0.08 meters, by the way, but there's a lot of numbers here to read. For hit scan projectiles that are more precise, such as Peacekeeper and Heavy Pulse Rifle. Now, this one I think is weird because Soldier has... I would say a high rate of fire, but I guess it's not as fast as Tracer, so I don't know. I'm pretty sure in the leaked patch notes, Soldier was grouped with Tracer for that smaller size. I guess they must have changed it last minute. Plus 0 0.05 meters for travel time projectiles. By travel time projectiles, they mean projectiles. There's hit scan, which is instant, and there's projectiles that I'm just going to refer to as projectiles. That our shotguns or have a high rate of fire, like Roadhog or Ramatra, are bigger, the same size as Tracer or Reaper. They're still bigger, though, because this is a plus, and projectiles have always been bigger than hitscan. Plus 0.1 meters for projectiles with a speed greater than 50 meters per second, such as Zenyatta's Destruction Orb. I don't know what else would fall into this. Uh, I don't know where Risa's primary fire is. Po plus 0.15 meters for projectiles with a speed less than or equal to 50 meters per second, such as Ferris rocket launcher. Excuse me. Very large projectiles with a base size greater than half a meter have been excluded from these increases, such as the energy javelin, fire strike, uh, stuff like Sigma's rock, um, things like that. Uh, I'm assuming Roadhog's hook, <laughs> but who knows. Hero combined HP, base health armor shields, has been increased by 15 to 25%. So weak heroes like you know, Tracer, got an extra 25 HP. Most squishies uh, got an extra 50 HP. This includes Reaper. So Soldier now is at 250. Reaper is now at 300. 300 plus HP tanks have been increased by 75 to 100. And I think Bastion, because Bastion was 300 HP, so now he, I believe Bastion is at 350. Each hero's precise health increases are listed in their patch below. Okay, cool. All ultimate ability costs increased by 10%. Um, I guess this makes sense because basically everyone has more health and everyone is going to be able to deal more damage technically because it's easier to land shots now is the basic summary of this patch. So of course you're going to be landing more shots. People are going to be healing to get back to 300 HP on some heroes. Uh, so yeah, ult charge is just adjusted, I guess, to make it a little slower. Regen passive for all heroes. All heroes now regenerate 20 HP per second after 5 seconds of not taking damage. That's kind of crazy. That's so crazy, actually. Like, when you're done with a team fight, you're wiped. Like, your supports don't get that free ult charge from healing you after a team fight. I mean, they can if they're fast, but, like, now you don't need to worry. That's going to be so interesting to see how this specifically plays out in terms of supports. So, now I know that I said I would talk about this in terms of Reaper, so I'll get into that. Uh, I got kind of distracted for a second. So with Reaper, that means that Reaper has two self-heals. He has the 20 health per second after five seconds. Wraith form, I believe, lasts three seconds. So if you can do your full Wraith away from the enemy team and give yourself two extra seconds, you'll start to regen. That actually, yeah, that's going to be interesting. Uh, alt charge, alright. Alt charge, Death Blossom's gonna be harder to get. 
with everyone being so much more tanky now, I think Death Blossom is going to be garbage this patch. I think it's going to be completely terrible. Because um, Death Blossom is a pretty decently weak ultimate. It's like high risk, high reward, uh, but the risk is extreme. I believe it's, what, 170 damage per second? Um, so while it used to take just over a second to kill somebody, it now takes like, what, a second and a half or so. My math isn't perfect on that. But I mean, like, man. Also, Reaper's losing the one shot. Uh, Reaper cannot one shot a 250 HP hero, I don't think. Reaper cannot one shot himself. Uh, and since most squishies are being pushed up to 250, Reaper is no longer a one shot hero, which really sucks. Sorry, I don't know what that like whistle noise was I just made. <laughs> Support roll passive now reduces the delay before regeneration begins by half. So they have the same passive, but it's only two and a half seconds instead of five but it's still 20 HP per second. Okay. Damage roll passive. This is interesting. Reload speed bonus on the E limbs removed. Uh, I think that's good because this like unequally benefited some heroes over others. Had to close my door super fast. Like for example, Hanzo had, you know, he didn't really have a reload. <laughs> New, by the way, Hanzo is also losing the one shot, which good. Reaper like didn't need his. But Hanzo getting nerfed, I like. That's just my opinion, though, so take it how you will. New roll passive. Dealing damage reduces enemy healing received by 20% for 2 seconds. So, that's a lot. It's not. Ob it's obviously not anti-nade, but that's quite significant. This is what worries me the most about Reaper. Reaper is gigantic for a DPS. He's not Bastion, but he's, I think, probably the second biggest damage hero in the game. I don't know about Echo or Pharah's wings or whatever. But Reaper's big. He's an easy target. He, like, can't really fight back at range. So, Re <laughs> having 20% less healing. It says healing received. That's the thing. I'll have to test if that anti-heal affects self-healing. Because it says enemy healing received. Does that count as self-healing, or is that just from, like, supports and health packs? We will have to just wait and see, but I have a feeling that if this new DPS passive affects Reaper's self-healing, Reaper's probably gonna get dumpstered for a bit, because that's, like, <laughs> every DPS hero in the game can now directly counter Reaper's passive, and Reaper's passive is kind of all he has, because uh, Reaper's kid is not that great. Anyways. It's only for two seconds, though, so if you Wraith, you'll get it back, but whatever. Quick melee. Oh, that's interesting. I did not not expect this. Damage increase from 30 to 40. Obviously, people have more health. I like that a lot. Sounds good to me. Tank. Okay, here we go. The actual patch notes. Diva. Pilot increased from 150 to 175. Mech armor increased by 75. I'm just going to do the differences because there's going to be, like, 40 of these self-destruct this one's weird explosion maximum damage increased from 900 to 1000 inner explosion radius which is the range for maximum damage before fall off begins increased from four to six uh i don't know how diva's explosion works but it's going to be slightly bigger in the center i guess i don't know if that increases the maximum range but it does 100 more damage doom fist health increased by 75 Rocket Punch. Max impact damage increased from 50 to 75. Max wall slam damage increased from t increased by 10. So slightly more damage, slightly more health. Junker Queen, extra 75 HP. Rampage. Wound damage over time increased from 60 to 90. That is kind of insane. Maga. Health increased from 300 to 400. They gave Maga an extra 100, but not 75. Okay, <laughs> interesting, given recent events in the past few months. Arissa, armor increased by 75. Ramatra, health increased by 75. Reinhardt, health increased by 50. Armor increased by 25. Rocket Hammer, damage increased from 85 to 100. That's insane. 85, what? Oh, hold on, I'm pulling up my calculator on my phone. He can three shot a Reaper with 100 damage, assuming Reaper doesn't, you know, get self healing. 85 times 3 is 255. So that's still a 3 shot. Because uh, Reinhardt used to 3 swing for 255. That could kill a Reaper. And now he 3 swings to 
three shot a reaper at 300 so same thing that's how i'm looking at these is a buy reaper's hp but reaper has so much self-healing that it's going to be interesting but then he has to get through the extra 25 armor i'm moving on before i get too deep into thoughts charge while impact damage increase from 225 to 275 so reaper can still tank it very good with the same hp left over roadhog health increased by a hundred that's insane sigma shields increased from by 75 Winston, health increased by 25, armor increased by 50, so still 75. Tesla Cannon, damage increased from 60 to 75 DPS. Primal Rage, punch increased from 40 to 50. Wrecking Ball, armor increased from 100 to, well, by 75. Zarya, health increased by 75. Okay, so Winston got some damage buffs. Queen got some damage buffs. Ryan got some damage buffs. Hog and Mauga got big health buffs. Um, and Diva got a ultimate buff. That's interesting. I think that's everybody here. Oh, sorry, sorry. Primary fire beam width increased from 0.15 to 0.2 because everything's getting bigger, but beams are different. Damage, here we go. I am pretty sure Reaper's not going to get anything good, which kind of sucks. But let's see. Ash, HP increased by 50. Bob, weapon damage increased from 14 to 17. Bastion, health increased by 50. Cassidy, health increased by 50. Deadeye, initial damage rate increased from 130 to 150. Damage rate, incre initial damage, and then damage rate increased from 260 to 300. So I guess the damage just builds faster with the charge, which makes sense because it'd be so slow to deal with 300 HP heroes now, or 250 in general. Echo, health increased by 50. Uh, beam width increased by 0 0.05 meters because beams are special compared to projectiles. Duplicate. Maximum combined health value increased from 300 to 350. So when she dupes a tank, uh, she now has 350 HP. Makes sense. Extra 50. Genji. Health increased from 200 to 250. Why did I read it like that? <laughs> I don't know, but I did. So yeah, Genji has 250. And Dragon Blade. Swing recovery decreased from 0.9 to 0.7 seconds. I don't remember how that stacks for the entirety of a Dragon Blade, but basically he can swing a little bit faster, which makes sense because everyone has more HP, so he has to swing faster to kill them with his ult. Hanzo, health increased from 200 to 250. Storm Arrows, damage increased from 65 to 75. What is that, 75, 150, 225, so a four shot to a Reaper? What is that? Uh, pulling up the calculator again. What is 65 times 4? 260? Same thing. So yeah, still a 4 shot against Reaper. Because that's how I look at all of these. Junkrat. Health increased by 50. Frag launcher. Projectile size reduced <laughs> from 0.25 to 0.2 meters. So everyone's getting bigger sizes except for Junkrat. And I think Kiriko as well. I'm not sure though. May. Health increased by 50. She's at 300. Now, Farah got a huge rework. I'm scrolling down slowly because Reaper's after Farah. Oh my god. That is so many patch notes. Okay, hold the phone. Farah, health increased to 250. Rocket launcher, recovery reduced by 0 0.05 seconds. Projectile speed increased from 35 to 40 meters a second. Explosion self-damage reduced, so it shoots faster, it shoots <laughs> faster, like the distance it travels is faster, and less self-damage. Jet Dash, yeah, this is the big fair of rework that has been talked about for a little bit in the background. New secondary fire ability on her right click, so instead of having the like little boost jet, it's now this. Provides a quick horizontal boost in the direction Farah is moving, 8 second cooldown. Added a setting to activate jump, Jet Dash on Double Jump instead. So the way I heard it is Farah's rework is designed to make her more fast horizontally as opposed to vertically oppressive. Jump Jet now restores 50% of fuel and can briefly overfill the max fuel amount. Whoa, that's interesting. Vertical boost height reduced by 20%, again making her more horizontal with the hovering. Cooldown increased by 4 seconds, that's kind of crazy. Concussive Blast. Cooldown decreased from 9 to 7 seconds. Explosion now deals 30 damage to enemy targets. What did it deal before? Like 10? I thought it always dealt damage. 
okay? Explosion radius reduced from eight to six, knockback reduced by 10. So less knockback, um, more of a precision shot, but it does damage now and you can have a faster cooldown. Barrage now instantly refuels hover jets fuel. Little interesting. I mean, barrage is, you know, hit or miss, kind of like Death Blossom, except the barrage has actually insane damage, but she's standing still. Hover Jets. Speed boost increased from 20 to 40%. That's crazy. That's so fast, actually. Now requires landing to recharge fuel. That is the big one. Okay. So Jump Jet gives a little bit of fuel, and I think something else did that I can't remember. But now she has to actually touch the ground to get the fuel back. Can now be activated without fuel to slow your descent. So she has the hover thing like Mercy does, I guess. Or Echo too. Developer comments, Farrah has a significant update that empowers more individual plays and shifting her movement capabilities from high up to more horizontal movement that can cover distance quickly. All right, here we go, Reaper. I do not think he's getting anything other than this. Reaper, health increase from 250 to 300. Yep, nothing else, Reaper, because the rework is coming in like probably a lot of months. He's going to suck for season nine. I'm calling it right now. Oh, man. That's a bummer. Death Blossom, at the very least, should have gotten buffed. Because Death Blossoming against everyone being tankier now is just going to make the ability, the ultimate so bad. Death Blossom's already kind of bad in general. Because it's weak. But, man, that's going to suck. That's really going to suck. Plus, everyone's going to shoot at him during Death Blossom. So, even if it doesn't get cancelled, he's going to get less self-healing from it. Oh, man. It's Jover for Reaper. It's it's done. All right. Can't wait for that rework, though. But, yeah, I knew that was coming. Just sucks to see it. Sojourn. Health increased by 50. Railgun. Secondary base projectile size. So the actual railgun. Uh, reduced from 0.1 to 0 0.07. So, like, about a 30% nerf-ish or so. Okay. Soldier 76 increased by 50, Sombra increased by 50, Symmetra shields increased by 50, Photon Projector primary fire beam width increased from 0.2 to 0.25 meters, Torbjorn health increased by 50, Tracer health increased by 25 because she's squishy, <laughs> Widowmaker health increased by 25 as well. Interesting. I'm really bummed about that Reaper patch note, but I knew it was going to happen. At the same time, though, every DPS could counter that passive that reaper has and death blossom's gonna be crap i mean come on like farah got a whole rework cassidy got faster charging deadeye to compensate for the extra hp give reaper just a little bit higher damage on blossom or something it doesn't have to be huge because the rework is coming down the line but like oh man it just i think he's gonna be garbage this season support Anna HP increased by 50, Baptiste by 50, Bridget HP increased by 50, Rocket Flail damage increased from 35 to 45 on Brig, Alari increased by 50, Kiriko increased by 50, Kunai base projectile size reduced from 0.18 to 0.15 meters. So yeah, uh, Kiriko and Junkrat have smaller projectiles, which is you know kind of random, only being those two, but okay. Lifeweaver, health increased by 50. Lucio, health increased by 50. Soundwave, damage increased from 25 to 35. Knockback increased 12%. Movement lockout duration increased from 0.3 to 0.45. That's a pretty good buff on Lucio, my gosh. So for almost half a second, you can't move uh, when you get booped. Interesting. Oh, wait, that's Soundwave. Soundwave is the boop, right? I don't remember Lucio's ability names. I'm assuming that's what it is, though. Mercy. Health increased by 50. Oh, she got some stuff too. Guardian Angel. Active duration on jump crouch cancel reduced from 1.5 to 1 second. Active duration on the cancel. I don't play Mercy, so I don't really... That's kind of weird wording to me, but uh, I'm, I don't know if that's good or bad. Sympathetic recovery passive. Health recovered increased from 25% to 40% of healing dealt. Sympathetic Recovery. I don't know Mercy's ability kit entirely well. I don't play her that much, but it mm, looks like a buff, <laughs> I guess. I don't know about Guardian Angel, though. Moira, health increased by 50. Biotic Grasp. 
Secondary fire damage increased from 50 to 65 DPS. Secondary fire target acquisition radius increased from 0.6 to 0.7 meters. How interesting that one of the heroes who gets compensation buffs for all the extra health is the hero who's getting the mythic skin. <laughs> I'm just saying, like, it's kind of obvious that they do that. And that's not, like, a crazy obvious like it was with some heroes in the past. <clears throat> Genji. But just interesting that she's someone who gets a buff and she's getting the mythic, you know. Zenyatta. Health increased uh, by... Health increased on Zen by 25. Shields increased by 25. So extra 50. Map updates. Junkertown. Okay, new lighting. Oh yeah, Junkertown got a big update actually. Hold on. New nighttime lighting theme. New building near the first point to provide more cover and block long sight lines. Uh, don't know where the building is. But yeah, that first area is very open. Especially in the second half of the first area, it's so just wide open. Add a water tower near the first point to block sight lines uh, from upper choke positions. Okay. I'm thinking that's maybe above the mega. I don't know though. Added more vehicles near the cliff to provide additional cover and block sight. Yeah, that was so open. I almost never see anyone over there. Reduced the cliff's path side path to tighten the space and reduce the overall footprint of the area. Yeah, it's way it was way too spread out like no one was over there at least in my experience removed a small hp pack on the second area balcony that was easy for defenders to overuse i think that's like right when you enter the gate and you look up to your right there's like a bunch of rusty walls on a balcony i think it's that one which yeah i saw a lot of people camp up there especially soldiers and ashes and widows added vertical beam at second choke point to promote movement out of the upper floor and make the choke easier to defend. Out of the upper floor? I don't know where. Maybe it's where the small health pack was. I have no idea. Widened and added cover in a hallway in the third area to make close quarter fights easier to maneuver. There's so many hallways in the third area, I'm not even going to guess where this one is. Developer comments, we've added more cover, including new structures, to help counter some of the long sight lines around the first checkpoint. Additional changes have been made to the third area to allow attackers to push through certain chokes more easily. Well, I don't know. We'll see. I have no. I literally cannot guess where that third area point would be. There's a lot of hallways down there. It's like that entire U shape is just full of hallways. Alright, so we got some bug fixes here. General, fixed an issue with some shadows that would appear jagged on anything below Ultra. Fixed a bug that prevented your skin from changing when using change skin in Hero Select. Fixed a bug with golden weapons being marked as unspecified and not being purchasable. Yeah, I actually did have that. That's cool that that's fixed. That was a little annoying, but it wasn't that big of a deal. Fixed a bug with some callouts for pushing the payload, playing it in correct moments. Okay, so heroes would just say things wrong. Fixed an issue with wall climb failing in situations. Additional bug fixes for general stability. Okay, cool. Uh, maps in Arctic Peninsula. Fixed some lighting. King's Row. Fixed areas of the map are missing collision. <laughs> Interesting. Wonder what that is. Midtown. Fixed some locations that could cause some heroes to become stuck. I don't think I found any of those, but that's interesting. Shambali Monastery. Fixed location of the map that displayed incorrect textures. <laughs> Oh, okay, and the hero bug fixes, okay. Doom. Fixed bug. Meteor strike that would result in Doom Fist getting inside the environment. Bug that fixed seismic slam. Di Excuse me. Oh my gosh. I need to drink water, but I don't have any. Prevented seismic slam's damage from going through turrets. Fixed a bug that could prevent Doom Fist from requiring overhealth in some cases. Bug where rocket punch left a small window of time open to usability. All right, I'm going to skim through it. Reaper, where are you? Hello, you don't get any bug fixes. Uh, they're not going to fix the wraith bug that's been in the game since season four that, like, is either a ghost nerf or a bug that no one's talked about, and it's really annoying. When wraith has been cancelable for a few years, they slightly changed the timing of that, so now you either have to spam cancel or click it a little bit later, and it's just it's just annoying. Like, no one's talked about it, but it's definitely in the game. And that's about it. So yeah, hitboxes for left clicking. So yeah, basically dealing damage is easier. People have more HP. Moira's getting the mythic, so she got buffed. Lamau. <laughs> uh, Reaper's probably going to be garbage. It really depends, though, with how the new DPS passive and hits and hit skin uh, buff is going to affect him. Because 
if the DPS passive affects Reaper's self healing, it's over, and it probably will. So it's over. Um, however, having every one of Reaper's twenty pellets per shot be bigger, that could be huge. Like that could be a big deal because that like that means more headshots landing. That means more pellets landing. I don't know how it'll affect Reaper. Honestly, it could be a sleeper like huge thing for him because shotguns being easier to aim with is kind of crazy we'll just have to see but i have a feeling reaper is going to be garbage this patch because well it's so easy to escape reaper for five seconds for that healing passive to kick in it is so easy to shoot reaper to have that anti-heal kick in for him death blossom is going to be garbage because everyone has more hp Death Blossom is going to be garbage because everyone can shoot Reaper to lessen his self-healing. I don't think if both DPS are hitting one target that the 20% anti-heal stacks. If it does, that's going to be crazy. Uh, I don't think it does, though. I think it's just like that. So, like, while one of you is targeting the tank, the other one can target the other support. And then, like, now self-healing or healing on all of them is bad. We'll see. I think, honestly, though, final thoughts real quick. Reaper's gonna probably be bad, this patch, unless that pellet change is crazy or unless the self-healing is not affected by the new DPS passive. We'll see. I just have a feeling Reaper's gonna be dumpstered until he gets the rework. I do think Death Blossom should get a buff in the mid-season patch, though. Also, oh man, I didn't even think about it until now. If you Death Blossom in the middle of an entire enemy team, that gives everybody 20% damage reduction, or 20% self-healing, because that passive applies to Blossom. That's going to be interesting to see, but at the same time, it's not that people are getting out-healed by Blossom, except for the tanks who are, but it's that Death Blossom is so easy to cancel, block, escape, get out of, now that everyone has more HP, even heroes like Ana are going to have a bigger window of time to react to Death Blossom and sleep dart it or heal or just walk far enough away from it. I have a feeling Reaper is going to be garbage, but I will see. Um, either way, I cannot wait for the rework. I hope that he gets something in the midseason patch because I just have the biggest feeling he's going to be bad. Thanks for watching, and I will see you in the next video.